Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us. And um, we have now moved to the other segment of the program where we have another expert to help us shine light on a conversation that we believe is very, very important. Earlier on, we touched on the fact that today is World Food Safety Day. And um, to help us understand this a little better as it relates to our economy and, you know, the overall progression of this subject. It's yes. We have joining us uh, Dr. Aliu Ilya. He is the ED Save the Consumers, and he will be giving us his perspective on the recent happenings. Well, good morning, and it's good to have you join us. Good morning. Thank good you morning for having me. Good morning, and welcome. I Thank think before you go forward, um, we just want you to just briefly touch on Save the Consumer. It's such an interesting name. We've had you here. We've spoken about, you know, um, consumer rights and all of that, but we'd like to know just briefly what exactly your organization does. All right. Uh, uh, Save the Consumer is a, a non-governmental organization that focuses on uh, consumer education because education first and consumer protection. And when we say consumer education, we uh, make it a uh, a point of duty to allow Nigerians to know what about consumer itself, your right as a consumer, right to uh, right information, right to be educated, you know, right to choices, and a lot of things that has to do with them. Because by the time you understand what your right is all about, then you can easily get to know what you need to know. Then secondly, we bring things you need to know your dorm out. We educate you. This is A, Y, Z, and this is X, Y, Z, and what have you. Then we now go further to establish a protection to an extent where we see that your fundamental human that borders on uh, consumers, we will now escalate it to regulatory bodies or the appropriate organization that can take a step. Perhaps there is a lot of intervention on our part also to different uh, organizations. I think uh, going forward, we've been able to resolve a lot of issues and we've been able to escalate a lot of issues that uh, bring uh, a lot of uh, succor to people. All right. Let's, let's talk about it in relation to food safety. Yeah, I mean, interestingly, today is a food sa World Food Safety Day. And we are looking at how can we uh, guarantee that Nigerians consume more safer food, uh, considering the fact that we, we don't even look like we have much options at the moment, as we are talking about food scarcity and inflation and all of that. So let's, how, how can we ensure that Nigerians get you know, consume food that will be of, you know, to their good rather than, you know, harm them? Well, uh, I think uh, while the whole world is moving at and looking at food safety itself, Nigeria is still fighting and uh, try to balance the issue of uh, food security. So it's a two thing. Do we have the food security itself? Do we have abundant food itself? Before we now talk about uh, uh, what uh, uh, food uh, safety. safety day. Looking at that, let's look at it from food security itself. Uh, it's a situation whereby we have uh, a module of gari at 500, a module of uh, uh, rice at 700, a module of uh, uh, beans at 750. Can we say we have food security? Just no. And looking at the challenge we have in Nigeria, such as insurgency, banditry, people are not safe going to the farm. So if they don't go to farm, what do we eat? What we produce are produce. How are we going to consume? It's a big issue on its own that is a menace that if Nigeria did not look at it very, very well, next one year it will become worse. That uh, we find it difficult to even see the staple food, that the common staple food. Because I recall, Gary happened to be the most uh, uh, food that we can just pick. If I, before now, in some part of. Uh, it's known as the poor man's food. Man food. Thank you. <laughs> if I impart some part of Nigeria, they see Gary as food that you know, no food that a poor man. Uh, consume, but now it's a different bargain. But coming back to today's uh, uh, discussion on World Food uh, Safety Day, it's actually look at um, safe food now for a healthy tomorrow. Because um, when you say uh, poor food or food that is not well nutrition, it has a lot of uh, challenges that we need to, to look at. What I'm trying to say is that it's a situation whereby a post consumption a, a, a food a post food consumption illness that's what i want us to say from that perspective that's illness that follow the consumption of bad food 
and now you agree with me that a lot of people suffer this a whole lot sadly i'm not sure nbs is looking at such statistics in nigeria because if you look at it very very well it constitutes a lot of things to the economy uh even our lifespan it's affected children out of school because if children consume food that is bad definitely be out of school for two three days it also affects our productivity even people that work day to day because if you uh, consume bad food it means two three days five days to be at home trying to uh, sort it out so it's a very big issue and it's I have different dimension when we say this food is not safe it could be biological it could be chemical related and it could be physical uh, related they don't call food food bone uh, diseases that has to do with uh, food that are contaminated now this bacteria uh, affects food that are not well what package and consequently if you look at the chemical related one i'm sure it's not news to anyone in nigeria that people use sniper mm. to prevent food in the name of what uh pesticide so if you look at the danger even you perceiving sniper we know how difficult for you to breathe let alone using it for our food mm -hmm. it's still happening and our regulatory body has to do something urgently they ban it but when you ban something you didn't follow it with action it's come with a lot of things and also our physical uh, uh challenge in terms of uh, this uh, problem uh where we store our food is a serious problem and food ripening so it's a whole lot of uh, issues that uh, our regulatory bodies such as navdac uh ministry of health and all concerned uh, organization need to come on board i recall the 2019 theme for world food safety there was uh, food safety is everyone's uh, business because there is no way you not consume so if you now say you are careful at home not to consume bad food remember every person in nigeria likely there's likely that you consume one of your daily meal outside your home so how about the person who prepares such a uh, uh, food consequently we now have to look at the processes the food chain itself the farmer the person who processes it the person who distributed the person you know the retailer and the consumers and this thing as it goes around like this the consumer also have its own uh i mean share of a uh, responsibility you and, must find and, way and, and if i may come in right. that brings me to like the next dimension of this conversation right more often than not when we have this sort of um, conversation we tend to place the responsibility solely on the government and not to say it's wrong because the government um have all the necessary equipment necessary power to ensure that these structures work but also we have situations where consumers themselves have been seen to associate for instance imported products imp imported food to a better quality however we also know that some of these imported food have to be chemically preserved for them to last that long right we have literally seen consumers fighting the custom service for instance men of the custom service stopping smugglers from bringing things that are are potentially harmful to us and, and so it appears that also when we talk about shared responsibility we have a, a somewhat general sense of um, association of foreign products with a better product can you please shine light on that and if at all there is anything we can do to ensure that consumers do better right thank you so much uh, the fact remains that the quest for uh, foreign food cannot be controlled for now because we even see it much more better compared to what we consume in nigeria because in a seen climb there's a regulation for every aspect of food for instance look at our uh, pesticide there's no rule in nigeria that listed out accredited pesticide that you can use to preserve or f in the farm there's no data such so if anyone will you get to see just handle it and use it the way you want and there is no appropriate measure uh, for it ordinarily our restaurants they need to have an association that government will use that platform to speak to them and uh, what have you but by and large i think i still think it still borders on regulation but let's now come to consumer ourselves you have a lot of responsibility there are a lot of terms and condition as small as it is if i ask the majority of nigeria 98 percent of nigeria don't even look at terms 
and condition of anything they consume or anything they pick. I think there is a lot of sensitization that needs to come is, comes in into into that because when you look at the how they do it when it expire you know best before date you'll be conscious and do a lot of the but we just buy gala on the street remove the uh the sachet then we start consuming mm -hmm. it without looking at the, mm -hmm. the what could be the approach the same thing also apply to other produce other products that comes in India. thanks to a uh, customer that is even doing well if i need at a point even say customer giving people uh bad rice until they came out and said no it is being examined and being confirmed by another. But the problem lies is, is that in Nigeria, when you're trying to save Nigeria from what even save the consumer had an as, as an as experience, when you try to save Nigeria from a bad thing, they will say no. That is exactly what they want. Perhaps they will see you as constituting nuisance. And the problem you're trying to correct that in this bank, this is not how to do things. This is how to, they will now go the other route and try to. If not, how can smuggle work in the same? country it is our season fault because if you don't buy those things they pass through the uh the corner side and if this thing is being tamed appropriately and we are not encouraging it it will reduce uh drastically and this uh maybe the illness and every other thing that follows it will reduce so as a consumer nobody needs to tell you that when you are cooking the beans that the first water of that beans maybe you can throw it around put another one that it helps you at least to an extent in case there's any chemical related uh, problem you don't need to be told it's your own responsibility it's also your responsibility that when you buy meat from the market you take it to your home you wash it appropriately before so it's our own responsibility as well however it's a chain of uh, responsibility by the government by business owners by the distributors and by consumers so we must all take responsibility but by and large government need to come first because they will take the they will have to solve the chunk of about 80 percent of the uh, problem by having appropriate supervision appropriate uh, uh, framework for all this uh, uh produce so it's a big thing but i, I still think consumers need to be conscious of what we consume yeah you know talking when we talk about you know regulation and monitoring and all of that uh it seems to put a lot of responsibility on the government um in terms of for instance having uh you know farmers let me use maybe fish farmers for instance right. uh, we know that there are a whole lot of substances that are used to increase yield maybe for economic reasons uh, some of the food that is being fed these uh, maybe fish or even chicken you know sometimes who makes sure that those substances that is given to these fish fish and this thing are not things that will in turn end up harming the consumers who will you know be the ones to consume these things right. because uh, you know the truth is that an average nigerian who is into these things is always looking out for the profit regardless of what impact is going to have you know on the consumer so how well are we doing every businessman want to make profits and that's the essence of business however if you recall at the point when you take um, a malaria drug it will not any reaction in your body have you taken note of that it is over consuming of those things because they use those things for animals so when you use it for animals and you are now consuming it you know it should be there will be an issue that those things will not react right so now that's why i said it's still government now if a, if a sniper is not on the shelf for someone to purchase who will buy it so you must ban those things but sniper was is used for a different right is made for a different purpose yes All right. but look at collateral damage of what is used for and what people are now using it for you now see reasons why you there should be a proper control of it so also other things now if you have a chicken people that are rare chicken there are some drugs they apply to this chicken in the long run it's coming to our body I, i'm sure we all know that so if there is anything that affects them that the overdose in them is going to affect us in fact the loss is if you are buying a chicken eat it after three stop the the, the feeding of the, a particular drug for that chicken three days before consumption because there are some drugs that they give to this uh, 
chicken. So if they continue giving, perhaps they give the chicken this morning and you buy the chicken this afternoon and you, you know, there's a transfer of that directly to you, human. So it still borders on government and different associations to come on board and say this chemical are not allow for this and that. But trust me, an average businessman who see business as a legal robbery we go ahead and buy what we make is chicken very fat and he'll make his money so an average businessman think is money but government will now come and say no this is what you need to to do and that's why there must be continuous research on all these things so by and large governments have a lot of responsibility on what we consume and what we consume definitely is affecting our lifespan is affecting our productivity is, is taking our children away from classes and a whole lot of things perhaps you consume some things i remember i recall in my house there's something we all we consume all of us mm -hmm. nobody could go out for three days so i started doing findings mm -hmm. and what happened so you know the, just so that we can touch on other issues right uh, what do we say to the tomato seller in the market who's you know who is a retailer uh, you know is the middle person between the wholesaler and the final consumer what do we say to such a person in terms of safety and making sure that whatever for instance a perishable uh, I of uh, food is being you know purchased by that person is kept in a safe manner such that it doesn't pertain danger for the final consumer because the instance is this when you go to our local markets for instance I mean as far apart from the malls that you go where you see organized, everything yeah. well organized mm. and everything sometimes the environment in which some of these food items are being sold if you look at it sometimes it's really very appalling so what do we say to people like that I mean government may not go all Defin the way definitely to enforce and make sure that the place is well you know you see and this is a chain that can be worked on all now if you look at all these pepper sellers they have associations there is no food i can maybe go to southwest go to the corner you see all these people have association they have junior they have the chairman the chairperson they can all be rich but who starts that conversation is government give us two representatives from tomato seller in otako market you call these two uh representative teach them the process and how they can keep this thing very very safe if you go to some part of where they produce this tomato they lay it on the floor by the roadside mm -hmm. and later they pack it dry it and sell to to people so but from association of farmers you can control that from market women you can control so you control that is a stage by stage but government must initiate that because they know it's bad but how then you must also provide an enabling environment for their storage itself and even the market itself you don't allow people to just sell recklessly there must be an organized way of of doing it so and perhaps that's why we have we talk about consumers you saw that the way this person is unkempt with what she's doing if me and you and every other person every other person the person will sit and say, what's wrong with me is because you are unkempt and people will not buy from them you understand so these are the things we need to keep educating our say what you consume to your mouth you must be as conscious as possible about it mm -hmm. very key all right thank you very much for joining us this morning thank and you, as usual shine light uh, on what we need to do as consumers and right. also what governments must do right by us we hope that everybody takes the good news and the gospel that food is important for 